It's hot out there and the sun is shining bright, but don't let that sun slow you down. Introducing Shady Rays, your ultimate companion for every sunny adventure. With Shady Rays sunglasses, you'll enjoy unbeatable protection from harmful UV rays so you can focus on having fun under the sun. These premium sunglasses come with polarized lenses, cutting through glare and ensuring crystal clear vision wherever you go. Whether you're hitting the beach, hiking in the mountains, or simply strolling through the city, Shady Rays will keep you looking stylish while keeping your eyes protected. Every pair of Shady Rays sunglasses feature their signature lost and broken protection. So if you lose or break your pair for any reason, they'll replace them. And the best part, with our special code, enjoy $20 off your first purchase. So what are you waiting for? Head to shady.themanspacepodcast.com. That's shady.themanspacepodcast.com and pick out your perfect pair of shades. Sunglasses aren't meant to be loved. They're meant to be lived in. And with Shady Rays, your sunny days just got brighter. Thank you, voice girl, and welcome once again to another edition of the Man Space Podcast. Now, this is the voice of Russ, and with me, as always, is a man who's trying to rush out summer so he can get to pumpkin spice season, the <laughs> one and only Big Les. Man, what's up, bro? What's why, going on, man? Man, why you gotta lie to him like that, man? They know I don't man, like pumpkin you know you spice, that, man. You put on an act last time we tried that pumpkin spice bruh, stuff. Bro, I did. I did. <laughs> I can't do it, man. I can't smell it. My wife love it too. She's like, oh, you know, this smells so good. I was like, not in here. <laughs> so, you know, since we didn't do it on video last time, you know we got to do it again, right? Oh, Lord. All right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm I'm gonna have to give me some liquor to go with it and see what, what see what brown liquor tastes better with pumpkin spice. Oh my god. Hey, that might be how we do it next time. Hey, well, you know, I might have I'm a brown liquor drinker. So <laughs> <laughs> but let's, let me ask you this. What's up, man? brother? What's up, man? Have you ever just had something that you just Want it so bad that you could actually taste it. Mm. Yeah, there's a few things in life, I'm sure. Don't ask me to recall. Oh, no. The Manscaped Podcast is talking about food again. Here we go, man. Yeah, yeah, tell me about it. So I went to uh, D.C. this past weekend, right? Yeah. And I don't know, have you ever had birria tacos? I've seen them online quite a quite a bit. Is it that's the way I was? I've seen them online, and I think they look amazing. Mm-hmm. I've been wanting to try them, but Mrs. Russ has this thing of the way they look, where she just doesn't want to try them. So I don't blame her because they don't look that appetizing to me. To me, they look amazing. That, okay, I'm I'm not about that life, but. I've been wanting to try them, but I won't make them just because she's on this whole uh-huh. the look thing. Yeah. So we went to D.C. and the hotel we were staying at, right across the street, was a place that did birria tacos, right? Oh, well, you, I'm you, like, you had to. You had I'm, to try. I'm just like, okay, I'm getting these things. They're right. on my mind. Right, right. We got to the, we got to the hotel so, so late that mm-hmm. they were already closed, right? Yeah. So the next day we go to this event. They had free food at the event. Mm-hmm. I'm not touching it because <laughs> all I'm thinking of is when this is over, the, the I'm Bria getting tacos. Bria tacos. That's yeah. it. You know, we get in the car. The wife's like, oh, you want to go over here for dinner? Nope. 
I'm going back to the hotel because I'm getting birria tacos. Yeah, I'm yeah. in the car and I'm just thinking about it. I'm doing a little dance and everything. <laughs> birria tacos, birria tacos. I got a whole thing going, right? Oh man, I can see her face now. Like, <laughs> oh, you know, yeah, she was she was quite disgusted because yeah, the whole was. thing. I know right? she was. I know she. And was. I'm like, I showed her the whole menu and everything. Like, mm-hmm. okay, there's more stuff. So you can get something else. But I'm getting these tacos, right? Yeah. Pull it up in front of the hotel. Mm-hmm. They got valet. So I'm sitting there waiting on the valet to show up. Look at you balling look out. look over. Yeah. Oh, that's the only way. You, you know, I wasn't balling out. That's the only way you could park. <laughs> the hotel. There, was, there was no other option. This is, <laughs> you balling with tacos. That's what yeah, I'm talking this, about. This, this wasn't, this wasn't that, that type of trip. Yeah. <laughs> but I look over and I'm like, the lights are not on. Oh no! I'm like, are they closed? Oh, Did they no. close early? I start looking them up. They're closed on the weekend. They don't open again until Monday. What? You talk about dude the the that, look of hurt that was so disappointing. Oh, I know oh my was. god! I know. I was just straight disgusted. See, I have a problem with. I I get it because I understand economics, right? Mm-hmm. But here's the thing. I have a problem with some of the local area places that I would frequent. They, you know, soul food, stuff like that. Things yes. that you want to get. But they close at six o'clock. Right. And the, or and, they're not open. Consistently. Or they're not been consistently. Exactly. So I'm like, are they open today or are they not? Right. But then I'm like, OK, it's five, six o'clock on the weekend. Mm-hmm. I want to go grab some chicken wings or whatever. How come you're closed? Right. This is the time where people want to eat things. We had a place not far from us that used to serve these sticky wings. They were amazing, right? Mm-hmm. And we would go there after church, you know, come rolling through, get some food after church, head home, went a big deal. We'd actually see people from my church that would drive like 20 miles out of their way to come to this place to get get sticky wings, right? Yeah, absolutely. You come by there one Sunday, they're not open. The next Sunday, they're not open. You just, you know, just randomly drive by. Oh, they're open. Uh, Next Sunday, then you don't, you don't know. That's horrible, man. I'm like, how, what, how can you stay in business? Well, they actually went out of business now, but I'm like, it's typical of, Places of a certain ethnicity. <laughs> I, I knew you were going there. I knew it. I knew it. But but it's but it's absolutely right. Unfortunately. Yeah. Yeah. There there's a a, a certain uh fish place. Demographic. Up, up yeah. Near yeah. near where you used to live. Oh that was the same God. way. Yes. You, you go by there one day, it's like, oh, yeah. it's this is great. You go by there the next next week, same day, at the same time, it's not open. Yeah, or they Jesus. closed the hour early. You know, I'm yeah. like, Jesus said they had to close, bro. <laughs> That's all I'm going to say about I'm, it. I'm not going to co-sign with you. <laughs> and I'm not going with you on this one. I'm okay. just saying. That's I'm all gonna I'm going to get out of this one. It. That's all I'm going to say. <laughs> Hey, I, you're I gonna call exactly, me Michael Phelps. I know exactly <laughs> the place you're talking about, and, yeah. and that is one of the establishments I was speaking on when I made the comment. <laughs> I go there one day, mm-hmm. I'm like, Oh, okay, you know, the wife wanted some fish, and I was yeah. gonna get some wings. They, they, they okay, the wife likes the fish because mm-hmm. they sell a particular fish she likes, right? Right, right. I'm thinking. It's 5 30. I just got off of work. I'm right at home. The, right. Why wouldn't they be open? Yeah. I said, babe, call it in. Mm-hmm. Right. I'll start swap through and pick it up. Right. Man, I'm like five minutes away. And, and the old lady called and like, uh, they said they closing in, in 10 minutes. Yes. I said, what? Yeah, they they closing. It, the sign has been on the door. We don't, we 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 don't. Come here every day. You right. don't see no sign on the door. You know, but you know? it was it was one thing 
during COVID. We know COVID changed a lot. Yeah, COVID, things, right? COVID, COVID did a lot of things. COVID did but a lot of things. The yeah. place that you're speaking of, this was way before COVID, bruh. Yes, it was. <laughs> Because, you know, I don't live by over that way no more. So it was before mm. COVID, right? Yeah. 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 I said, oh, my God, man. And then I had to hear, well, I don't know what else there is for us to eat. I'll eat anything, you know? <laughs> Mistake, <laughs> bro. Yeah. Mistake. She, yeah. She, yeah. She always say, you the picky one. I'm picky. I just don't. See, my wife does everything. the same thing to me. Yeah, I, I'm. Like, I'm not. One. I'm not picky. I just. I just know what I don't want. You know what I mean. I get I, her with that though, yeah. because she, she'll say, "What do you want?" I don't care, dear. She'll say, "Red lobster." I don't want red lobster. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, I'm yeah. like, I'm saying that that's was why she in a heartbeat. <laughs> that's what she do me to say. <laughs> See, dude. Now it was one time, uh, like I don't eat Applebee's. Right, mm -hmm. and I I rarely eat McDonald's. Mm -hmm. You know, I re I really don't do. I I'd, I'd rather have Burger King than McDonald's. Right, really? Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. The, the okay. burgers, I like the I like the the I think the burger is better at Burger King. Everything else sucks, but <laughs> <laughs> I eat the bur I eat the burger and some some cold onion rings. Because you, cause you can't never get them hot. I don't care right. if they came out the grease, bro. As soon as they hit the open air, it's a wrap. That is so true. <laughs> it's, it's a wrap. So true. I, I mean, seriously, bro. I mean, they. I asked for fresh onion rings. Watch them. I sat there and waited 12 minutes. Right. Right? I seen them pull them out the grease. I seen them put them in the, in the little carrier thing. Yeah. Put them in the bag. Soon as I got to the car, opened up the bag, got one, it was warm. I got the second one, it was cold. I was like, I I don't know how to, I don't even know how to explain this. You know what I mean? I, I don't know how to explain it, bro. It's but so it's, true. They fries. I'm trying to tell you, I put them in a slingshot and knock a slingshot, and knock a bird out the air. I mean, and I just don't get me started on fast food. I, I first of all. COVID did a lot of things. COVID not yes. COVID not fast food on the top of their head. Mm -hmm. Right? Absolutely. And it has never come back since. Yes. Yeah. yeah, you're right about that. You're right about that. Because yeah. the, the closest fast food place to me was a Burger King. Mm -hmm. And, you know, they had to start adjusting their hours because, yeah, they you know, they couldn't about... get anybody to work, you know. Some days they'd be open at six. Other days yeah. they didn't open till eleven. And yeah, yeah, bro, yeah. I went to a Bojangles, man. This mm. this is a for people who don't know what a Bojangles is. It is a Kentucky Fried Chicken or Popeyes. It's it's just it's in the in the southern states, right? Some it's southern a Carolina states. thing. Yeah, pretty much. Mm -hmm. I pull up to the to the thing and like, hi, how can we help you? I'm like, yeah, I'm gonna get an eight piece. Uh, and this, that, and the other. I'm sorry, we don't have any bone-in chicken. Well, okay, well, tell me what you got. Uh, all we have now is chicken, the the filet sandwich, the, the spicy chicken sandwiches. Mm -hmm. I don't want that. Why y'all still open? Close the doors. Our, our truck didn't come today. Lady... I, I really, I had some real choice words, but she just worked there. Yeah, you know? it's not her fault. It's not her fault. But it wasn't the first time. Go there. I, after, I've run. I've experienced. Go there that after one eight o'clock. Go there after yeah. eight o'clock. We don't have no bone in chicken. We're not serving bone in chicken. We'll close then. Bruh, I went to Popeyes. Oh Lord, we ain't got no chicken. <laughs> Stop <laughs> talking about my people like that. <laughs> I'm talking about my people like that. Oh man! Oh. Well, see, and up north, Popeyes is you know, I ain't gonna lie to you, they way better than they are down south. The best place I've ever had Popeyes was New Orleans. New Orleans, 
That that's yeah. the best place I ever had Popeyes. Mm-hmm. You yeah. wouldn't think that there would be that much of a difference between it is a huge. Yeah, it is a huge but, difference. New but Orleans the second is... place, the second place that had the best Popeyes was in Michigan. Mm. And I, you know, we've traveled quite a bit. Yeah, yeah. That that was the second best place. Mm. Man, boy, I would go to the end of month, boy. Get the end of the month special. 30 pieces of chicken for $19.99. Boy, we're going to eat for two days. <laughs> oh, man. But we got to get out of this let me, one. Let me stop talking. <laughs> yeah, you bring food up all the time. <laughs> hey, well, uh, well, okay. We can talk yeah. about it. We both got that <laughs> in us. We yeah. Both, yeah. But speaking of food, we're going to tie this into our guest here. Man Space Nation, we got a special guest joining us, and longtime listeners of the show can remember hearing him back in season three on episode 108, Man versus Jam and Jelly. Well, he is back with us to discuss the latest happenings in Mission Jam and Jelly. Ladies and gentlemen, Please welcome the author and creator of Mission Jam and Jelly, Mr. Sean Beach. What's welcome, happening? What's welcome, happening? Welcome. What's up? Thank y'all for having me. I'm happy to be back. Y'all got me over here. Need to get some food or something now, man. Like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for real. You know, yeah. we're we're used to recording around this time, so you know yeah. we we know how to we plan ain't. it. So yeah. it's like we're. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what well, what it is? What are y'all talk? Uh, bear, how do you say it? Barrier yeah, taco. Yeah, barrier tacos. Barrier tacos. Never heard of it. Never heard it's of like, it. It's like it's like shredded beef in this it's, sauce. It's the. Have you ever had a French dip? Yeah. This. I mean, I know what that you. is. Yeah. So it's like a French dip of tacos. Yeah. They. Okay. They cook the Tortilla. meat and, and the sauce and everything that comes up is like a tomatoey type sauce that comes up. Oh, wow. They dip the tortilla into it to get the tortilla wet. Then they grill it mm-hmm. and put the meat in it with some cheese and onions, fold it over, and then they give you some of the sauce on the side to dip the tacos in I after it's cooked. Cool. Yeah, man. It looks amazing. It's but sad. I've been wanting to try it for years and I can't. Just yeah, yeah, just yeah. No yeah, well, you're just not looking at you in the right spot for him. No. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely no. not. I no. <laughs> no. They're not here. You might be in the right spot for them. Me? I mean, no. I'm down here in Bumpkinville. <laughs> and in Bumpkinville, they are not here. I'm just in North Bump. <laughs> I'm in North Bumpkinville. So <laughs> <Shoot>. <laughs> Oh, oh, Sean, what's been going on with you, man? Just writing, writing, writing. Yeah, you know, this summer, it's... I took a, I took a lot of time off this summer to just lock in and write. Mm-hmm. You know, just to, because I know this school year is coming up and it's gonna be a busy season. So yeah, yeah, that's mm-hmm. what's up. Man. It's been a, it's been a year, a little over a year since we had last had mm-hmm. you on the show, man. So yeah, it's crazy. You know, been checking out what you've been doing on social media and everything, and I mean, you've been busy. You know, especially yeah. doing a lot of the shows within the school system and everything. I mean, we, we're really proud of all the work that you've been doing over this yeah, last man. year. That's awesome. Appreciate That's real that, awesome. Y'all. Man. And likewise, likewise. Yeah. Yeah. Y'all got uh, new new things going on over here. We got the video now. You got new yeah, effects, right. sound right. effects. <laughs> right. yeah. Oh, yeah. We, we're yeah. always trying to change stuff up now. Hey, man. Yeah, you love know, it. Got to do what you got to do out here in these streets, baby. That you know? part. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. That part. So right off the bat, man, for those that listeners that are new, can you share what to the uh, Man Space Nation, what Mission Jam and Jelly is all about? So Jam and Jelly, uh, it's a book, a children's book series. I use the term children lightly because it's really for all ages, but it's an action book series. Jam and Jelly are superheroes who um, save the day. Each each book is kind of a different mission and a life lesson. So it's, mm. it's fun for me because I get to be a big kid. And, you know, it's fun for anybody who reads it because, you know, whether you're a child, you get the life lesson out of it. Some of these life mm-hmm. lessons are valuable to adults as well. Right. And and there's been people 50 years old collecting the books, you know, yeah. and, and just believing that is going to be something much bigger 
mm-hmm. the books. You know, yeah, one day. absolutely. See, mm-hmm. absolutely. It's got your name on it, man. That's what it is. Yes, That's sir. all that yes, is. Sir. So, so now, let me ask you this, because you mentioned the, the life lessons. Um, mm-hmm. Are any of the life lessons stuff that, that went through, that you experienced in your childhood and growing up? Oh, yeah. Every life lesson I write about is something that I went through, something I'm still going through. Uh, yeah, they're all life lessons. So um, book one, facing your fears. Book two, mm-hmm. being friends with somebody who's different, you know, mm-hmm. Book three, thinking for yourself, being a leader. Book four mm-hmm. just came out about what two weeks ago, and that's yes. about forgiving others. And mm-hmm. you know, like I said, these topics, like forgiveness, is something that we still need to practice a lot. Right. I know Absolutely. I need to practice that for sure. So. <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. yeah. I resonate with the one with being friends with you know other people, you know, because oh, yeah? yeah, Russ, man. I mean, look, look at the dude. You <laughs> talk to be friends with. <laughs> <laughs> Woo, man. <laughs> Man, I tried to, that's a whole that's a whole other story right there. He but. tests my limits every week. <laughs> <laughs> y'all look like y'all making it work though. Y'all got the podcast rolling. Hey you know? man, we you know, we 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 do what works best for us, you know? Absolutely. <laughs> you know, yeah. I only talk to him like every other day than every day because yeah, right. You only talk to him on podcast days. Yeah, because I can't take them, man. You know what yeah. I mean? <laughs> now, let me stop messing around. So, Sean, your lead characters, Jam and Jelly, how did you approach the process of develop uh, developing, turning a fruit group into relatable and engaging characters for your children's comic book? Yeah, so that's just creativity. You know, I'm mm-hmm. just very blessed that God gave me that gift. And I put a lot of work into this gift. It sounds kind of crazy to say that, you know, you can put work into being creative, but Mm -hmm. that's all I was doing, you know, since the time I've been a kid Mm -hmm. in elementary school, I would, you know, just rush to get home. I play with a cloth. Like I told y'all before, I had a cloth and I would make all these ideas. I do that for hours and hours every day. Like the same way an athlete goes to practice. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I was playing with that cloth and creating Mm -hmm. storylines in my head over and over and over again with different characters and so all of that work has you know led to jam and jelly and you know more to come awesome so were a lot of these stories that you're telling right now as far as the Mm -hmm. characters were all these things that that came from childhood as far as the the characters themselves were these characters developed from your childhood so jam and jelly i had that I, i had the idea for them since college Okay. okay. So yeah, some of the ideas I've had earlier uh, mm-hmm. before Jam and Jelly will be coming right. out too. You know, it's all going to be connected in one way or the other. Right. Right. Okay. Yeah. You, you mentioned earlier that the books are really for everybody, but it's, who are you really targeting when you first started trying to design the books? Like, was there a specific age group that you were really trying to target, even though the books are kind of for everybody? Yeah, I would say, uh, you know, elementary, middle school, that's what mm-hmm. I started off with, just because I had experience working in the school system um, right. at a middle school. And then with various elementary schools, I started mm-hmm. kind of, you know, just talking about my stories and the kids. Right. Just it's, It became a thing where the students would, uh, Mr. Sean, when are you going to release the books that you're telling us about? When are you going to do this and that and this and that? Right. And I'm like, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and do it. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, like, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and do it. And now I'm just grateful enough to do this. Uh, like, this is what I do is my job. And I still, you know, mentor a lot of the students, help them write their books right. and use their creativity too. So. Oh, okay. Yeah. There you go. There you go. So what is the process from creating your storylines? Um, and how long does it take to go from the idea to the finished product? Mm, good question. And it's different on each book, you know, mm-hmm. less like one book could take me... Let me see the longest i took to write a book might have been three months three mm-hmm. four months that was my second book i think that mm-hmm. was because i felt pressure because the first book first had book. such a great response it did. Like, yeah mm-hmm. and i wasn't even thinking like okay i have to have something ready to go right i was just like i wonder what this first book is going to do and so i'm like i gotta have a good storyline a good lesson it has to tie in yeah so after that second one i kind of got back on a little roll and mm-hmm. i could i can usually get them done in about two months 
Mm-hmm. And being this, this is your, this is your full time gig, though, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So this right. is what I do. Like you know, I try to write every day. Okay. Uh, okay. Right now, I'm feeling like I'm locked in. I'm in a zone, and I just want to keep writing and writing. Mm-hmm. And and that's tough too, because I, you know, I have a life outside of right. Just writing. So yeah. I have to balance that. That's the tough part. I'm still working on. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm yeah. still working on it too, but and it's been a quite a while. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Man Space Nation, we we need to take a quick break and we're gonna come back with more with Sean Beach. All right, right after this. Welcome back to the Man Space Podcast. This is Russ Les, and we are joined by Sean Beach. So we yes, got a man. game for you. We know last time you were here, you played a couple of games with us. Well, yeah. we got a different game this time. And this time, okay. we're going to do a little bit of called Would You Rather. Basically, Les is just going to read you out a question, and we just kind of know, would you rather this, would you rather that, and why? You know, just kind of giving the you can go high so that way, yeah. So the man space nation can kind of get into your mind a little bit. And hey, you, I like I like how he leaned into it. I, yeah, he, he ready, <laughs> he ready for it now. <laughs> so you, you said I gotta ex- have a why too, right? Yes. Yes. Okay. Okay. All right. So in the superhero realm, what would you rather have the ability to fly like a bird or swim like a fish? And why? Fly like a bird. Okay. And I feel like it'd be harder for villains to get me if I can fly. Mm. You know. <laughs> All right. All right. <laughs> what, what about you, Les? What, what would you take on that one? Man, I, I'm gonna swim like a fish, baby. You know why? Really? Yeah, because because you, you got other predators in the water now that can easily well, get you there. You didn't ask me what predator I was gonna be. See, I'm not gonna be a minnow, cuz I'm like an orca <laughs> whale or something. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, that that fits you exactly. <laughs> you know what I mean? I eat dolphins yeah. for dinner. You know, but the reason I say that is because the ocean, the, this Earth, is seventy percent water, mm. right? And it's only thirty percent or less has been discovered. Mm-hmm. So I like to be in the honeycomb hideout, baby. Yeah. No. Okay. Piggybacking on that, yeah. I am extremely interested in the ocean, though. Like, really? Oh, really? It's the most fascinating and it's the most scariest thing I can think of. Yeah, it is mm. probably the most scariest thing. That's in my top three. That's for yeah. sure. Yeah. 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 So I, I don't, I don't mess with it. All right, yeah. let's move on. Next, next one for you. Here you go, Russ. What's your answer? You didn't. Oh, he don't like. I, the, I'm like he you. He gonna say it. he gonna be a bird. No, I, yeah, yeah, I'm seagull. like you. I, I'd rather be a yeah. bird. I'd rather fly. You know, yeah, I yeah. I want to be above the mess. He gonna, you know, he, he I don't want to be a that. seagull eating people's hot you know, off their grill. You know what happens? Funny. You know, everybody dumps their waste into the water. I'd rather be up in the air so I can be above yeah. it all. Or you go fly through <laughs> pollution. I get hey. it. <laughs> 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 All right, here you go, Sean. Would you rather travel back in time to meet your ancestors or travel to the future to meet your descendants and why? Oh, that's a good one. That is a really good one. That's a question somebody has ever asked me. That that is a good one. While he's thinking, you got you got an answer to that. I'm thinking too, bro. Yeah, but I have this fascination with. My and my my roots. Mm-hmm. Why I like some of the music that I like. Why I like some of the foods that I like. Why, mm-hmm. why, why does you know, it, it just little quirks about myself, and then being the the ethnic group that we are, little was known past three or four generations. Mm-hmm. You know, 
So I really want to try to connect some of those dots. And it's extremely hard to connect mm-hmm. some of those dots, even though mm-hmm. even with some of the the things in my family, the, the ethnic groups and stuff like that within my family, it's still hard to trace your roots yeah. back. So I would yeah. I would love to go back eight generations, mm-hmm. you know, and, and meet some yeah. of my ancestors and kick it with them, you know. Mm-hmm. But that's you know that's real, yeah. I think you just inspire my answer. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> inspire me. Right. I think it'd be cool, like you said, to just really like spend, like say you could spend a day with your ancestor yeah. and really like experience that, whatever that is. It's, yeah. Whether that's, yeah, yeah. I, yeah, I think yeah. that would be the most life changing thing I could do would be that to take yeah. that choice. See, for me, I I'm the complete opposite. I would rather meet my future descendants because mm-hmm. I would rather know that the things that I'm doing now has mm-hmm. set them up for them yeah. in the future. Mm. Yeah. So I that's why I would rather meet the future descendants, you know, because there's some stuff that's happened in in our past that I don't want to be part of. And I don't. I didn't say I wanted to be a part of it. I don't want to go back and sit there and be sitting sitting on the porch and get mistaken for something. And next thing you know, there's a whip across my back. I mean, that's a bad example, but still, I I, I'd rather know that what I'm doing is making an impact on on the future. So I rather meet my future descendants. I appreciate that. I could appreciate that. Yeah, 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 yeah. That was a great question right there, man. Yeah, that was, that was good. Shout out to the writers, you know. <laughs> we we got people now. You know what I'm saying? Hey, look, hey, look. I told y'all things changing around here. We got people now. We got people, baby. No. <laughs> All right, let me ask you this. Would you rather have the ability to speak and understand any language or be a master at playing a musical instrument? Oh, easy, easy, easy. Any language. Any language. Any language. Mm-hmm. That's impressive. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. I have a dream to do that today, like going into yeah. a restaurant and ordering yeah. my food, using their, a different yeah. language. Yeah, mm-hmm. easy. That's easy for me. Man, yeah. I can't. I can barely speak English. I don't Ain't know if I want to do that one. We know you struggle there. <laughs> yeah. Hey, I know how. Yeah. I know how to speak Ebonics. That count. <laughs> it does not. It don't. But it don't. It's in the dictionary. I, I'm with you guys on that one. I I'd rather be a master of multiple languages. Like I have a, a friend of mine who speaks like six different languages, maybe more, but I know she speaks at least six. And I'm like fascinated, like, like, okay, like which language do you actually dream in? You know, when you Mm. Or it's like when you when you're having your thoughts, like which one of these languages are your thoughts in? You know, I'm always fascinated by that stuff and and being able to sit there in multiple different environments and know what's going on around you at all times. Yeah, I'd rather be able to to master yeah. those languages. Yeah. See, I'd, right. I'd 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 rather do the music. Really, mm. it's a uniter. Everybody, mm. if you who can mm. master all. Uh, playing musical instruments, all the musical instruments, mm. you can transcend transcend across all across all groups. You Every, could, yeah, you, you know, could, but I mean? you don't like people. I don't. <laughs> so See, why would you I, want? You to, but I do like music. You know, you just you wouldn't you like to know when somebody's talking about you? No, nah, I don't care because then I have to fight if they you know if I really found <laughs> out. I but you say, but take. you go into the but Chinese we, restaurant and they're like, "Oh, he's back again." <laughs> <laughs> I want chicken wings and shrimp fried rice, lady. <laughs> Fry my so wings hard. If you mastered the music, though, everybody would have great things. I mean, you great right. get great reactions. That's right. You know, everybody would have reactions, great things so. to say about you. You know, so you have to think about the positive side, Russ. Prince was a person who was a, a master of multiple instruments. Can't nobody say they hated Prince other than Michael Jackson. But deep down, there are a lot of people that don't like Prince. Yeah. And those nasty. are the people that, you know, 
<laughs> well, it was nasty. I mean, and then later, when he got became Jehovah Witness, he got you know, mm -hmm. yeah. And <laughs> what? Everybody got to learn, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so you weren't in the press back in the Dollar Nikki days, Bruh, A little red Corvette. Mm. Yep. All I could name about seven, eight, ten, twelve of them. Okay. I'm a Prince All fan right. to this day. All right, we're not gonna test your knowledge. Don't do I it. Feel like no. I, I feel like if I was back then, I would have been, I would have been rocking with. Not saying I wouldn't have been rocking with Prince, but I would have been a Rick James. Oh, I'm a Rick James I, fan I, too. I bump Rick James now. I, I bump some Rick James. What? Boy, has you? Woo! Have you gone back and looked at some of those videos he did back in the day, bro? They are hilarious, man. Bruh. Him cameo dude with the big red coat. Oh my yes, yes. <laughs> those things are hilarious. I can't believe we used to listen to that stuff, but those things are hilarious to watch now. No, the one Go, that gets Sean, me. Do yourself a favor after this and just YouTube some Rick some... James videos. You will get some good laughs off of these things. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. One of my favorite songs ever. That Ebony Eyes. Y'all heard it? Oh yeah, yeah. That one? yeah that's yes, what? yes, yes, yeah. Oh come yes. on, man. Le Less yeah, I know a little sing. something. See, look, y'all ain't even know that. Come see, on, man. Don't see, sing, Les. I, I, I ain't going to sing it, though. I ain't going <laughs> to sing it. Who did he sing that song with? Smokey. Rob, Smokey. Yeah, yeah, Smokey Robinson, right? Mm. Yes, he yeah. did. Yes, he did. But uh, there's a female artist, if we talk about music, I'll quick do a quick parlay. They okay. used to sing with Rick James quite often. Mm -hmm. And she was one of the best female singers of the time, but really? did not get her props like she should have. Tina Marie. Mm -hmm. Cause she got um, what's that her hit song? What's oh she, she what's didn't have plenty of Portuguese love. Yeah. Um, our Ebony Eyes. Uh, she got another uh, song. Shoot, she got she got tons of them, but she's done a fire. Uh, what's the what's that one? Fire and Desire with Rick James. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like, you know what I mean? But <clears throat> Tina didn't get what she was. She was she was a beast. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but yeah, but she was one of the first in that ethnic group to cross over into the R and B like that. You know, mm. so mm. Russ, you, you don't like Tina Marie, bro? I really wasn't a, uh, that much of a fan. I mean, no? she has some good songs, but I wasn't that much of a fan. Tina Marie, boy, she's a beast. Got to give it to her, man. If you like Rick James, you got to like Tina Marie, bro. No, you're not I mean, saying you I like was, Rick James. I oh, wasn't a big Rick James fan. That's yeah. right, you a Michael Jackson fan. That's right. I was a, I was actually a Prince fan. Oh God, but. I mean, I really wasn't that much of a Rick James fan. Okay. Well, who was your favorite artist back in the day? Mm. I was... So, I did like bands. So, I was a big fan of Morris Day in the Time, uh, uh, Mint that's Condition. A, that's a Prince. You know, Morris Day in Time is a Prince collaboration. It's a Prince. That's but right. I, I like Morse Day in the Time was like if I hear anything that they do, I'm gonna stop what I'm doing to listen to the song. I, I love love their music. Um Mint Crazy. Condition was probably like my favorite I like, of I like all Mint condition. Yeah, you know, I was a big Jodeci fan. Yeah, you know, so but see, that ain't old school, man. You talking about doing your time. I mean, I'm talking, I'm talking about your mama, your daddy, your mama, your oh, pappy man. time, you know. I mean, for me, once, once you used to I, sit I would, around in the living room and your mom and daddy used to play, man, that was, you know, my mom was always Commodores, mm. you know, you know, because coming up from coming up in Alabama, you know, the Commodores, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. right up right yeah. down the road, you know, yeah, Lionel Richie, yeah, all right, yeah, yeah. So it was yeah. it was a lot of Commodores, a lot of the Isley Brothers, and yeah. you know, Earth, Wind, and Fire for me. Mine was mm -hmm. Teddy, turn them off. That's what I my daddy knew. used to holler down the hallway talking about turn out them lights. <laughs> <laughs> I used to Move say, right yeah. there. Yeah. I used to say, yes, Teddy. He'd be like, what you say? I said, okay, daddy. 
you know what I mean? So he he thought I was talking about something else, but it's all good. <laughs> Man, so jumping back into the questions here. <laughs> So when you're in your writing process, you know, have you ever just like come up with like writer's block where it's just not working or you put something to paper and you're, you're thinking and you're about done and you go back and read it like this is just not good and just, you know, it doesn't work. Mm -hmm. and, and so how do you overcome that? Like my technique is to just write, write, write. For instance, this last book I just wrote. I just wrote, wrote, wrote whatever idea was in my head. And after I got everything kind of out of my head, I realized it was doing too much. Right. I'm the type of writer where I don't, even when I go see a movie, I don't necessarily like when there's too much going on. Mm -hmm. Even though I'm writing these cartoon books, it's going to sound crazy. I, I want them to feel like this could actually happen. Right. And gotcha, gotcha, and gotcha. So to do that, I, I have to um, make sure that I get everything out, try to simplify it. And my process of doing that is to just let everything out first, go back and read it and erase and edit yeah. afterwards. I try not mm -hmm. to, and I'm learning that about myself. I try, I think I work better when um, I'm not editing so much as I'm writing because that's stopping mm. the process. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. you can get out of okay. your own way. That's good. Yeah. yeah. I don't really have yeah. too much writer's block. Yeah, I don't really have too much writer's block. For me, it's more mm -hmm. so just focusing in on all the ideas I have. Mm -hmm. Hmm. That's <laughs> interesting because I, I sat there and I actually wrote uh, a little kid's book not too long ago. And it didn't take me long to put it together. And after I sat back and I started trying to to put it all together, I'm like, this sucks. And it just, you know, <laughs> threw it away. <laughs> it just never went back to it. <laughs> hey, if it sucks to you, then yeah. it probably does, you know, because you're the person that it has to matter to the most. I, and, and that is so true. And and that's one of the things about this show, right? Yeah. And put, putting this show together, um, when we started out, like, <laughs> it was if the content wasn't good to me because I, that's what I, I felt like I needed to appeal to. I couldn't appeal to everybody, right? Um, mm -hmm. I had to make sure that what we were doing was good to us. Mm -hmm. And if people liked it, they liked it. If they didn't like it, oh well, you know, sorry. But you know, we wanted to make sure that we entertained ourselves. And in the process of entertaining ourselves and doing the show, we wanted you know, more and more people started to gather on and started yeah, to, to yeah. tune into what we were doing. So, Stop trying to make it so, you know, <clears throat> black and white. You yeah, know, to just yeah. be organic. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah, so yeah say, absolutely. You know, when, you, when you start catering to other people, that's when you start going down the downhill slope and it starts mm -hmm. to feel like work because now you have right. your, it becomes bigger than everybody, you know, who's literally on this podcast right now. Now you're trying to think about right. people who aren't even on this podcast and what mm -hmm. they're thinking. It doesn't yeah. work. Right. Right. You, and, and people are crazy. You don't want to think what everybody thinking. So you ain't kidding. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> you ain't kidding. Yeah. So Sean, let me ask you this. Uh, young readers come from diverse backgrounds. Uh, how do you mm -hmm. ensure that your comic book your comic books are inclusive and representative of all different types of cultures and perspectives. I just write and I write whatever I'm feeling, whatever I feel like the characters need to be. I just write it. I'm not in my head so much thinking about that. Right. And right. for me, you know, I'm a black man. I come from a black background, have a black family. And so that's important for me to have. And I have other characters in there as well. Just, because naturally I just felt like writing other characters. But, right. uh, you know, first and foremost, I had to make sure that I represented me and where I came from in it. Right. And, you know, when I'm uh, going to a lot of the kids I mentor or, you know, when I'm talking to somebody about potentially buying a book, that mm -hmm. is a joy to me when I see, you know, um, a little black girl looking at the front of a book and saying, you know, Hey, yeah. that's that's me. That's me right there. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, that's that's one of the biggest joys. That's awesome. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. That's I just, that I just is, write that's an awesome. Representation, man. Representation. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
Yeah. It's funny. I I can I can hear my 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 grandsons are in the next room, and I can hear them reading uh, book four right now. I I, I can <laughs> wow. hear them through the wall reading book four. That is yeah. crazy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's crazy big bless and i'm so glad i got to meet them this last what yeah twice in the last month i think yes yes uh, yeah yeah i'm so glad yeah. i got to meet them cool right there they're too cool yeah, right they, there. they <laughs> are they are so into the series now they're they're really loving it that's love I, that's love i kicked my grandkids out because they 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 hood like they paw paw <laughs> they, they just <laughs> <laughs> they, outside, they outside riding dirt bikes. <laughs> <laughs> Eight o'clock at night, they flying up and down the street. <laughs> hey, you gotta get into jam and jelly. You might keep them in the house. You know? I don't think so, man. These dudes, man. <laughs> I can't. I can't, man. I tr- I try, but you know, I I think it's I think it's good for them to have a mixed. You know, that time is coming. You yeah, know, yeah. They're, they're, I have them sit down sooner or later. But what yeah. the dudes, they that's they, hilarious. They yeah. acting a fool right now. I I would be hollering at them, keep the front wheel down, but it is what it is. So <laughs> hilarious. <laughs> so as you kind of evolve the characters and evolve the books, like how are you trying to stay current with what appeals to kids and trying to keep their attentions because you know, like Les was talking about the kids with the bikes and the digital age and everything else, all these other things that are taking kids' attentions. How how are you staying current with your topics to keep them engaged? It's it's not that much of a challenge for me because I'm a big kid. And mm-hmm. it helps that I'm still around kids a lot to know how they react when I read the stories to them. Uh, right. Author, author visits when I go in school, they're a big help because I can see, oh, when I say when I say this, the kids go crazy. And when I say yeah. this, it's like a pattern that the kids are excited about. If I say this, maybe this didn't get the reaction I thought it would. But, you know, so it's like a trial yeah. kind of thing. But it's not a challenge for me because at the end of the day, I'm operating in the gift I've uh, been given. And mm-hmm. part of that is uh, just having the creativity of a child in a way, childlike yeah. creativity. So I, I feel like I'll always be in tune with that as long as I uh, stay focused and continue to yeah. work on that gift and use that gift. Yeah, and not let absolutely. Try. Absolutely. And, and I love the way you said that because every single person on the face of this earth has a gift. But most of us are not using that gift to our abilities right now mm-hmm. no. and mm-hmm. and you are 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 tapping in to to what god presented before you and and you're tapping into that and you're making a difference and it's it's just absolutely beautiful and amazing and you know i'm loving watching what you're doing and i yeah, i'm glad here. that we same got here. a chance to meet you, you know, over this last year and and uh just kind of watch you continue to grow and blossom, man. It's just been amazing. Thank you. Thank yes. you. It's, I appreciate those words. And we all, like you said, we all have a gift, and some gifts seem crazy. My gift is cartoons and yeah. being <laughs> I'm a person that's I'm good with people. That's another gift. Like I'm good with yeah. people. Awesome. Yeah. And you know. Telling somebody I have dreams of working on a cartoon series, making an own car, my own cartoon kind of right. uh, company. That sounds crazy. But at the end of the day, that's what I'm supposed to be doing. Mm-hmm. So you got to walk in your, you, you got to walk in your gift. Yeah. yeah. You know, and a lot of everybody people don't, don't, don't matter. matter. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Your gift is what is all that matters. Should matter. uh, which character is your favorite character to this point? I get, that, I get asked that question a lot, and I don't have an answer. I wish I had an answer. <laughs> I wish I had an answer. I wish. It's hard because they're all me mm-hmm. in different ways. You yeah, know, I'm taking a piece of myself out and putting it into each character. Mm-hmm. But I'm excited. I'm really excited about 
the next series that's coming soon. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. That's all. That's yeah. I'm excited. And your grand, your uh, grandkids over there, yeah. they'll see soon at the end of book four. You know. All right. Because hmm. that's right. that was kind of where I was going with it. Next is like you know, mm-hmm. what's next and when can we expect book five? It should be, I want to say around February. Okay. February. Okay. Okay. Yeah, definitely, roll it out. definitely will be Earth on the, Day, on the Day month, Black that. History Month. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh, oh you, yeah. You born in February too? Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. All right. You? All right. Yeah. I am. I am okay. also. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm yeah. the 27th of the year. Yeah. The 27th. Yeah. 20th. Ah, okay. Uh, and his yeah. wife is the 21st. 21st. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. 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 Wow. <laughs> oh yeah. So, you know, <laughs> you know, we got to do it in February. For Turn sure. it up, baby. Turn it oh, up. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> and, and jam and jelly. You know, jam and jelly. I'm framing them like the starting point. Yeah. They're mm-hmm. gonna be. The classic character for Cartoon Junkyard. Okay. Yeah. But with that, other characters and other things would be intertwined around Jam and Jelly. Mm-hmm. There you go. Yeah. Like right now, man, and I have to tell you, my favorite character from the moment I saw it was Icy Slice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The soon as I saw this, I'm like, oh yeah, that's it right there. I'm less. It's yeah. it's a it's a slice of pizza uh-huh. that's kind of got like a little block of ice on it, like it just came out the freezer. Yeah, I, I, I love this character. <laughs> Who does you know, it remind you of? It took me back to me in my college days because yeah. <laughs> you know it was nothing. You know you you open that that leftover pizza box you yeah, know, in the yeah. mornings and you grab that cold pizza and run See? it past, man. Russ, yeah. you hit it right on the head. That yeah. is inspired by, you know, in college, mm-hmm. you eat pizza a lot of the times. So you yep. yeah, pizza watching what your shows and you put some up to save for the next day because you're already yep. thinking about what you're going to eat for lunch the next day. Mm-hmm. They got that frozen <laughs> pizza. Yep. And, man, That's the craziest it. part, y'all get me excited now. The craziest part is I don't even I don't know if you read the book or not, Russ, but Icy Slice transforms by the end of the book to a yeah. different character. Yeah. Oh wow! Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it's a hot pocket. I don't like that. I don't like that. Don't like that. We don't want to. Like we don't want to give it away. We don't want to give it away. Yeah, yeah. I I actually I just finished book three, and I, and I'm gonna swipe book four for my grandson. So uh, when they go to yeah. school tomorrow and and read it, so yeah, <laughs> that's what's up. Let me know but, what yeah. you think. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely, man. Uh, this has been tremendous, but let me, let me ask you this. Well, let me ask you, Les. Yeah, man. What character would you be? Because we got to get us characters in here. We got to get, we're going to have to figure out a way to get us some characters in here. What kind of character would you be, Les? I don't know, man. If I'd have to think about it, who would I be? See, I see you as a grapefruit because you're round. <laughs> 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 ah, I see why I don't like him. So you see why I don't like him. <laughs> see, oh, <man. laughs> this, this is what I'm talking about right here. You know what I mean? We could get along fine for 40 minutes. And then all of hey, a sudden, Russ somebody, set it up too. Russ set up the whole segue. Somebody. <laughs> he set up the whole segue questionnaire. Yeah, he did. Yeah, he did. He made me think I was doing something great, and you know. So if you see a grapefruit in book five, oh, we know. <laughs> he don't like grapefruits, so he ain't doing that. Yeah, you he right about that. <laughs> grapefruit ain't in there. So, Sean, tell the Man Space Nation where they can follow you and find more information. Cartoon Junkyard on all social media at Cartoon Junkyard. Website is www.cartoonjunkyard.com. Shop with me. You know, um, the main goal is to inspire uh, all ages. It's a blast. You, you heard it here. It's been a pleasure having you on the show once again. Yeah, likewise. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Sean Beach, make sure you check out cartoonjunkyard.com. 
pick up Mission Jam and Jelly. Book four is out, and you can actually get books one, two, and three there on on the shop as well. So, Sean, man, as always, it's been a pleasure, and we look forward to having you on again. Maybe when book five comes out, we'll get you on and promote that one. Definitely, I'm looking Absolutely. forward to it. Hey, we got to love you. Stop, baby. Come on now. Oh yeah, you know it. You know it. <laughs> Y'all the first slot for book four, so hey, you know how hey, there it is. There it Absolutely. is. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. We'll be back with more of the Man Space podcast right after this break. As we do each week, we like to close the show with just a little bit of inspiration. The word of the week is reinvention. You see, reinvention is a noun. It means the action or the process through which something is changed so much that it appears to be entirely new. This past week, I got a chance to see the premiere of a documentary featuring some amazing women to include my wife and it was called reinvented to rise and i heard story after story of how these women overcame hardships and struggles and had to start over not once not twice in some cases five times but they all came out to be a success and I sat in the theater and I just started writing notes after notes and just getting all these different nuggets from what they were saying. And the last thing I wrote down was, why not me? So, Man Space Nation, I say to you, why not you? You see, there's no time like the present to look at what's failing in your life and start over. See, just like our guest today, Sean Beach, was telling you his story with writing books, your life is a canvas waiting for your strokes of transformation. So seize the moment to craft your narrative, Man Space Nation. I know you're not waiting on me to say nothing. I was waiting on you to say something. Were you? Yes, I was. I can't say it because it was it was so profound. I had to find some tissue and wipe my eyes. You were on camera, so the, the, the Man Space Nation saw that you weren't wiping your eyes, man. You weren't I, touched by that moment. I, I was like this. <laughs> <laughs> oh, gosh. I don't know why I work with you. <laughs> Yes, you do. <laughs> oh my gosh! And on that note, I'm the, I'm done. I'm going. I'm, I'm we out of here. here. <laughs> Thank you for listening to this episode of the Man Space. Whichever platform you listen to us on, make sure you subscribe and don't miss a show. Remember to keep up with all the Man Space updates on our website, themanspacepodcast.com. And you can follow us on Instagram at manspacenat1. Until next time, Man Space Nation, he's Les, I am Russ, and we are out of here. <laughs> All right, Les, let's finish up the show. Les, 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 wake up, man. Sorry, man. I'm tired. I was up late last night. Here, here, try this. Bro, I'm not a coffee drinker. Trust me, man, you'll like it. Man, this is really good. Smooth, no bitter aftertaste either. What brand is this? It's Kairos Life's latest creation, a Brazilian infrared roasted coffee. I really like this. 
Where can I get it? It's not sold in stores, but you can go to the shop section of the manspacepodcast.com and order yours today. Well, all right. I'm ordering mine now. Manspace Nation, don't miss out. Go to the shop section of the manspacepodcast.com and order yours right now.